What's up, Matt? I am getting ready to do something here, but I'm trying to create a workaround for tomorrow night's live giveaway. Can you guys hear me pretty good right now? Right on. I'm, uh, I'm going to open up this thing I got tonight. I was just trying to see if I could. I don't think it's a possibility. All right. How are you guys doing? That fireball? This fireball, Matt? My mask? I'm in my garage. Is it that bad in California, Matt, that you have to wear your mask in the garage by yourself? Pretty sure nobody wants that because I drank that without my mask on. Right on. All right. I'm trying to find this feed on YouTube, and I'm not sure I can watch myself. Yeah. Hold on, guys. I, I, I Trust me. I'm going to be back. You see the hat? I'm trying to watch. Go on your phone. Bring me your phone once you get it on there. Uh, the stream is a lot better because instead of using a $4,000 iMac, I'm using an iPhone. So what I'm trying to do is do this for tomorrow night, but I want to be able to see uh, what's going on on the YouTube page. So I got to figure out how to do that. And I'm not sure I can do that on an iPad while I'm... Um, There's a commercial already? Yeah. Oh, we'll skip that. Okay. Okay. We got good lag, so we got to turn the volume down. It's sort of like calling the radio station and they freak out. We're not going to go too terribly long tonight because tomorrow night is, you know, how those work out. But I wanted to be able to see what you guys were typing. Um because it just pops up on my screen and goes away when I'm live on the phone. So I don't want to miss watching yourself. Hey, settle down. Matt. The iPad, you can't see the feed on the iPad? I can't. Here, try and figure it out. Okay. I don't know if I can watch myself. Baby T's helping out. <laughs> oh, could you? No, you know what? We'll talk about hats tomorrow night. Not very well, Matt. But the reason, the reason I went online tonight was, look at that. Child. I, uh, clearly I chose the Garmin over the other models and I even went bigger than I thought I was. You can't beat the deal. Um, the Garmin 93 UH, UHD SV. I mean, the names are like this long. It's kind of like watching Gold Rush and when they talk about a Caterpillar earth mover and they got to use the whole name but at any rate i want to try something different i have the lawrence elite 9 ti on the helm and it works great but the hummingbird up front it just it doesn't really have any options and there's nothing wrong with it in fact if somebody wants to buy it i'm selling it we'll talk about that too tomorrow night if anybody's interested um you know it's up to you. It's a seven inch Helix seven. I think you can see the box right there. Oh, well, everybody's happy turkey daying each other and not paying attention. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, um, at any rate, I had the option to get the Elite 9 TI2 
or the Garmin. And I chose to get the Garmin um, because it's different. And if I like it, I'm probably going to change uh, change out the Lowrance up front to, or at the helm and uh, have Garmin's. The beauty about 9-inch fish finders, guys, is if you... Um, if you don't like it, for some reason, you can always sell them for at least what you paid. At least. Sometimes more. Once these $5.99 sales go away, you won't see them again for another year. And people want 9-inch units. And everybody knows they cost about a grand when they're not on sale. No, because you'd win, Matt, with that giant cigar in your mouth. But at any rate, yeah, I, dude, I, I think I am going to like it. I'm still playing. <laughs> be like you, dude. Be you. I need more food, but it'll be too loud. So. All right. Let's open this thing. Like I said, oh, and it comes with a transducer. You got to be careful sometimes. Sometimes these sweet deals you miss the fine print and you'll get the nice unit and you'll get it home and you'll be like where's the transducer well that's 200 more so we're gonna open it i haven't opened this yet hopefully i don't tear the box apart by the way if you guys buy some of these high-end fish finders keep the boxes people really get excited about that when you go to sell them again it has the box so and so we have, oh, it's in a nice protective cocoon. Hold on. It's nice that it comes with this cover. Uh, my Lawrence Elite came with a cover as well. You know, come to think of it, all of my Elite stuff came with covers. The Humminbird did not. No cover. Food for thought. But this is a touchscreen unit. It has a nine. Oh, uh, maybe I won't take that off yet. Nah, hell with it, guys. I'm gonna use it. Look at that sexy thing. It does have buttons on the side. Most of them do for for little function here and there. But it is a touch screen, and you can touch all over it. So this model does have obviously indicating the sv in the name it has side view and also the, what they call clear view which is down imaging um i don't know why they went there like that but it's down imaging a garmin sticker what else do we got if you're gonna cut your dash out in a fancier boat and flush mount it we got some uh, templates for that. What else do we got? Oh boy. Wow. There's some substantial uh, stuff going on here on the, uh, on the gimbal. So it's got like a protective doohickey to where this unit mates up to, I take it. I've never really messed with these guys, so I don't know how they work. So, do something like this. You stick it in there. I'm gonna do it. So, because it does have pins in it, I'm assuming you wanna be super careful with this. You bend one of those pins and you're gonna hate yourself the next day. And there it is. It's mounted to the gimbal. You got power. The transducer. Uh, networking stuff. Yeah, you got the NEMA stuff. You got the networking. I'm probably not going to network anything, being that I have a totally different brand at the helm. So I'm not even going to sweat that. It's it's more about the transducer. Now, the transducer, um, that's going to be a challenge. And I'm going to come up with something that's uh, viable. When you have the Tarova, 
things get a little dicey trying to put a transducer on there because it spins around as opposed to the, the edge that you get. It does spin around, but you're able to wrap your cord around it and it follows the motion. On this, it has to pass through a mechanism. So you can't do that. There were people back in the day when cords were a little thinner, running them down the... Shit. People were running it down the groove in the shaft of the trolling motor. Well, that works in a perfect in a that works in a perfect world. But I haven't seen this transducer yet. Yeah, so this cable won't work. I'm gonna go ahead and open it. Everything comes together in this fine bag of stuff. But I do want to see this transducer. This is the big deal, guys. So that cord is roughly a quarter inch in thickness. This will not go in that groove and go through the, the device that it has to pass through every time you raise and lower the shaft of your motor. So there are guys that have done some hokey things with um, like O's for uh, air compressors and stuff like that. So it recoils. So I'm, I might take some advice or, you know, some cues from those people, but um, ultimately I'm going to come up with something that's kind of mine and we'll see what happens. But what else I got in here? Oh, the transducer mount. You can either mount this on the back of your boat or on the bottom of your trolling motor. The transducer actually bolts to this bracket. All kinds of little doohickeys. I might actually have to read the directions on this guy. I've never had to read directions on just about anything. But this guy's got a lot of nuts and bolts. We got... Oh! Power supply. With an inline fuse. Okay. For us that have these boats... Once you take that front plate off and you bury this fuse... You're at the mercy of this fuse. So, point being... I'm probably going to rely on the fuse under the dash that I can get to when I'm on the water and chop this one off. That's probably going to raise some eyebrows. Some people might not uh, be into that, but that's what's going to happen. Hey, Wendy. If you bury this under that front portion of your boat, you ain't getting to it until you get home. So... I think the move there is to 86 it and go with the one under the dash. I mean, essentially, it's double fused, which is kind of pointless. If there's something wrong, it's going to let you know. But, yeah. Power cable. It's not exceptionally long. It's in the bag. I'm guessing somewhere between 4 feet and 36. 4 and 3 feet. Keep it simple. Yeah, so a bird told me that Bass Pro Shops in Springfield has about 150 of each of these units left. So I'm, I'm a liar. I'm going to say that's about six foot. So, yeah, Mitch, I've done all my fish finders that way. Not one of them's been fused underneath that deck because I just don't. I'm an electrician, I understand what happens. And trust me guys, you don't need to double fuse these things. They're not drawing that much current. Got a manual. But I mean, there that, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. I mean, this is, this is what you bought. You know, and then you got the transducer, of course. But ultimately, I'm excited about it. I can't wait to put it on here. Let's go for a walk. Where's my beverage? It's a, it's a shock top kind of night. Temperatures are dropping here. But 
This is the hummingbird that's gonna go away. And I think what I'm gonna do is either fashion my own bridge, what have you, or buy one. There's a company called Decket that makes one that basically straddles over where your trolling motor power plug goes. Uh, and I believe there's one made by, it's called Panther, maybe. I don't know for sure. They're a little cheaper than the Decket ones. But ultimately, it's the same result. And it, what it'll do is it'll bring up the, the fish finder, whatever height your gimbal is, you know, an additional three to four inches up. It's a lot of water. But guys, look how peaceful. That's my land. Not a whole lot of land. I'm sure some of you guys are laughing. You're like, I got 100 acres. I got a little more than half an acre, and that's my land. Sorry about that little trip around the garage, but. You want to check out the boat? It's kind of filthy, bud. Look. Oh, what's in here? Oh, I'm proud of it, Matt. Trust me, brother. We can look back here. We can see that we're charging. Guys, leave your bank chargers plugged in all the time. They're designed to do that and and go up and down and and manage your batteries. So don't don't listen to people that say unplug it once it's charged. That's a bunch of hooey. But I am going to add another gas tank this year, guys. I'm, uh, I think next spring, beginning of summer, after the tournament, after the tournament, tournament's number one focus. I am going to take this boat from one end of Bull Shoals Lake to the other. It's about an 80 mile trip. So fuel's going to be super important, even though there are places to get gas on the water you kind of got to plan it out because there's some serious distance between where i live and gas further towards arkansas but that is going to be a reality the ladder this guy that ladder has never been used i put it on the boat and uh never got used uh another thing that i'm going to do this next year is add a battery we're going to have three batteries uh, it's going to be a 12 volt system with two batteries though. And then the, of course the cranking battery, but, um, we got, when I go out by myself, this is kind of what I do. I lay the rods across here and I got one of these, one of these straps, but what do you think of that guys? Look at that guy. I'm hoping to foul hook a walleye with that. No, I'm just kidding. I don't want to foul hook one, but I want to catch a walleye really bad. And it's, it's kind of that time of year. But what else can I show you? Hmm. Rod holders. A lot of people talk about rod holders. Um, I mounted two of these behind each seat, but there's enough room for the rod to extend so that you're not banging against it. I used Canon rod holders. There's a million, well, not a million. That's getting carried away. There are several brands out there that you can use. And Canon is just one from my childhood. I remembered when it was time to buy them. We had Canon downriggers and Canon pole holders and all that up in the Puget Sound. So... Um, for those of you guys that are, want to film yourself on the water, this is big. So pay attention if you're one of these guys. I bought this YOLO tech rod. It goes where your navigation light goes on the stern and it's powered all the time. As long as the switch is on, I got a GoPro hero seven black. I think this one is, but why I'm talking about it is their customer service is awesome. I mean, I, I was thoroughly impressed. I reached out to them. I had, if you guys noticed the garage, right? Well, this thing extends out 
pretty tall. And I backed it in here one day with a camera still on it and in the up position and it just broke it. It broke one of these plastic pieces that encompasses the ball. And the neat thing, and I didn't, I mean, I guess I could have looked, but I reached out to them directly on Instagram and asked what, I said, I broke my, my YOLO tech. And they're like, oh, well, what'd you break? And I told them, and the guy gave me his cell phone number and texted me what I needed to do. And they sell these pieces individually. That little plastic piece, though, was $5.99. But when you're talking about this thing costs about 100 and I want to say I paid 100 bucks for it on sale at Bass Pro Shops in Phoenix. I think they're about 110 or 15 normally. But it's an important thing for me. I use it every time I go on the lake. So to spend $5.99 plus shipping, I want to say it was like 11 bucks delivered to my house, and I'm back in business. So... Kudos to Yolo Tech for, you know, they were right on it. When I texted that guy, I got a response in like minutes. And, you know, that's the kind of customer service I like. I really do. So, you guys are, I don't know anybody else that makes one of these. I'm sure people have made their own. But for about a hundred bucks, this thing's pretty slick. It does have two USB ports in it as well. I, uh, when I go out at night, I have this light that's got the GoPro style mount and it all goes together and it lights up the whole boat. And it flashes if you're in trouble. But at any rate, that's that's about it, guys. I mean, it's the Yolo Tech, awesome. I'm excited about this Garmin. I'm excited to give away a bunch of stuff tomorrow night. Um, I haven't decided on the rod yet. I'm trying to decide if I want to go with a, just a lose combination or branch off and do a different rod. I found some really good deals on, uh, and maybe you guys can give me your opinion, the 18 of you that are here. Um, there was a Falcon Buku, seven foot medium weight. And, and honestly, the reel that's, that Jeff has provided for the giveaway I don't think you'd want to use it for anything more than a light, you know, trout fishing or crappie fishing. So I was kind of thinking lighter weight rod for that kind of stuff. That Falcon uh, would work really good. There was a couple of Fenwicks I liked. I grew up fishing strictly Fenwicks. That's all I had. But that was also before there was a million brands out there. Yeah, I, dude, I have a Falcon rod here. Where is it? It's right here. This is a Falcon Jason Christie. I got at Walmart for less than 30 bucks on sale. And look, that's the most important part about this rod right there, boys. You started with the Snoopy, Matt? You know what? It really doesn't matter what you start with. Um, go fishing. It's good for you. But yeah. I have it with one of these KVD Smoke 3 um, reels by Quantum, which KVD doesn't use this anymore. He uses Lose. So, anyway, I'm, I'm kicking around the idea. By tomorrow night, I'll know which rod the, the winner's getting. And like I said, I think in the previous video that I'm going to have that sent directly to them as opposed to have it shipped all around for no reason. Um, especially this time of year, you know, you don't know, you have no idea if stuff's going to get to you or not. Um, where's my beverage? Hold on guys. That's one good thing about living in the Midwest. When it gets cooler, you don't have to take your beers in and put them in the fridge. You can just put them in a box right there in the garage. Absolutely, Matt. I'm here for you. Don't forget. For those of you that are upset with me for 
for drinking out of the bottle. I'm the only one that drinks it. Baby T doesn't like it. Baby T might have a Tito's with a half a shot in it. But, uh, yeah, and clearly the kids aren't boozing. So, at any rate, eventually I will drink that whole thing. I don't know if you guys can see this, but that mason jar right there. That was a gift from Greg Vincent. That was moonshine, and it was delicious. I'm letting the little bottom, there's about an inch, three-quarter of an inch left in there. I'm kind of letting that sit there and get nice and ripe. But it's uh, good stuff. Greg Vincent's the man for giving me that. But, oh, something that this fish finder has, it's got Navionic stuff in it, which I've never had in Navionic cards. Um, I'm not familiar with them. I think they're preloaded. I think it says something like 17,000 lakes preloaded on here. So hopefully Bull Shoals is on it. If it's not, we're probably going to take it back. Okay, maybe not. Right on, Mitch. Slay them. I want to see pictures. What's up, dude? Let me catch up on... Uh, Let me see here. Let's see the beer supply. Hold on. What happened? The, I just showed you the beer supply. That was totally uh, by accident, I guess. I didn't see your comment, but I got a 15 pack of the shock top right now, and I got the uh, 1.75 liter uh, fireball. That's just about enough for any human being. That could uh, turn into a horrible night if you decided to drink all of it. But that's not going to happen. I got to work tomorrow. One more day. I'm going to go fishing on Thanksgiving, provided it's not horrendously raining like it did today. So, you know, we're going to hope for the best. The fish finder might get mounted this week. I, I don't think it will, though, I because I do have to come up with something to mount it properly because a lot of people here, a little sidebar, a lot of people have mounted stuff to these motors that operate this way and broke their cables because it just, if these motors will keep spinning, if you keep your foot down and it'll just wrap everything up, you got to be very careful. All right. All right. Take it easy, Matt, Mitch, all of you. Wow. There's more people on now. I don't know what to talk about. I guess I'll have a, a cold one. Tomorrow, excuse me. For those of you that are going to be on tomorrow night, don't forget if you win something to email me. And my email will be, it's always in the comment section right below the, the video on the homepage of it. Email me. And if you win a shirt, your shirt size and... We have hats now. So, and I got all kinds of colors. So I'm going to give away a couple hats tomorrow night. And if anybody's interested in them, in, uh. Okay, Dylan. Okay, I'm going to stop what I was saying. Let me finish that thought. Dylan. I don't know in how big of a hurry you are to get a boat where you live. It might not matter. But people that are ordering right now are not getting their boats for like five months. So some people get lucky and people in front of them bail out and the boat shows up and it's, they're not expecting their boat for a month or two. And all of a sudden they're like, yeah, um, your boat's here. And they're like, what? I, there are several of these boats, regardless of what model you want, for sale with very little hours on them. I saw one come up for sale the other day. They want 10.5 for it, but they have some stuff done to it. They've got the upgraded fish finders. Uh, one of them even had a, I don't know if it was a Tarova or a motor guide, but a spot lock feature. And that, that'll set you back a couple grand. 
um, on top of the price of your boat brand new. But there are several heritages. If the 50 horse, if you really want the 50 horse, there's a bunch of classics and classic XL, XLs for sale. But there are heritages for sale with the 40 horse for around nine grand. Asking price, nine five. And I'm sure you could beat them up a little bit and bring that price down. I, I still think this boat is the best deal uh, for your money, even with the 50 horse. And I... I forgot, I should show you guys this. I have some some memorabilia. I do have the 40, I'm sure a lot of people have this, but this was the guide for this particular boat in mint condition. Like it's a baseball card or something. But these are pretty cool, what I'm about to show you here. These are the flyers that they had in the stores um they're different but i got one of these from a subscriber i met in chicago and then the other one was given to me by the boat the sales manager of the boat department at the independence bass pro shops in just outside of kansas city but those are kind of cool to have they're eventually going to be up on the wall so for now, that's where they are. We're st I'm in the process, guys, of bidding uh, a garage that's going to be on the land outside that window. I want to build a big shop garage, and um, basically the boat will be in there and my car and maybe another car that you guys don't care about, but it might be Italian. So... Um, at any rate, that's where we're at. Where should I put the Garmin sticker? I got a lot of stickers on my toolbox. I don't want to put this one on the boat, though. Anybody have any ideas where the sticker should go besides my ass or my mount? Oh, I'm keeping the catalog and the all this stuff. I, If for some reason I ever sold the boat, all that stuff would go with the boat, though. And, you know, I didn't buy... I didn't buy this boat for it to be like a trophy. I bought it to use it as much as humanly possible. And I've, I've achieved that. But this isn't the boat... These, let me say, not this, but these boats, these aren't the boats to buy um, as collector's items. It's like buying a Hyundai and, you know, going, I'm going to keep the miles off of it. That's, boats don't work like that. Um, unless for some reason it had a Lamborghini V10 in the back, then we could get somewhere with that. But it's just not that way with these boats. They're going to depreciate. And... You got about five to six years of, of good life. As long as you take care of it, you're going to get your money close to back out of it. But as soon as you get over that six year threshold, you know, you're looking at five grand to sell it. Um, and people at that point don't care what kind of electron you're better off peeling your electronics off and selling them separately. Steven, I like that plan. Two pounds. I can... You never know. That two pounds could make a huge difference in the tournament. How many of you guys that are online right now are interested or coming to the tournament at Table Rock Lake on May 1st, 2021? Anyone? None of you. I'm not getting any love. I know. I <laughs> I understand some of you live pretty damn far away, and that I get it. There's a lot of people. There's a dude that lives right on Lake Tanicomo by my office, 
and I have never seen his heritage move. The cover's been on it since I've been here Labor Day weekend. That boat's been in the same spot in his driveway. I'm kind of half tempted to go bang on his door and introduce myself, but um, everybody here is heavily armed and they're a little itchy right now with what's going on in the world. There's going to be a West Coast, Matt. I So here's the goal. I want to successfully pull this off, and it's going to be a first-class thing. It's not going to be like a local Tuesday nighter. We're going to have entertainment and food, and I'm trying to get some people to show up that everybody would be interested in seeing. So if this works and it's a success and it doesn't bankrupt me, I'm going to start putting these on around the country, maybe two a year, maybe one in the spring somewhere and, and one maybe in the fall somewhere. It could be West Coast, Florida, Texas to Minnesota, just depending on the time of year and what's happening. But I, I really think this would be a cool thing to get off the ground, but it's got to be done right. I, my biggest fear is failing at this. And, um, and I won't let myself fail at it. I just want it to be, I want it to be one of those things where when it's over, people are like, when's the next one? And that's in my mind. That's where I'm, my mind sits right now is how can I pull this off where people are begging to do it again? So that's kind of where I'm sitting on the, with that. And I, I think it's a good goal and it's, it's far enough away that I can learn from mistakes between now and then. And by the time May 1st rolls around, it should be buttoned up super tight. Arkansas, you can come up here. <laughs> I would think people that live around Arkansas from like North Texas to Chicago in that big circle, I think Table Rock's doable for you guys that, that can. Um, but yeah, reaching out and doing these events in other places is big time on my mind. But ultimately, I have to focus on what I got going on here and make this one successful. Because if it's not, nobody's going to want to do one on the West Coast with me anyway. And I, my ego can't take that kind of a blow. So it's going to be good. I, uh, I'm going to put everything I have into it. And hopefully the people that come... Um, have a great time. That's, that's where I'm at. So listen, guys, I appreciate you guys for coming on. I was just trying to check and see how this would work as opposed to how I was doing it before. And I was using basically my studio, but we have crap internet here. I am lucky to get eight download and one megabyte upload one. So I think I'm going to did you guys like, was this better for you guys as far as the visual and the audio goes? Did this work out pretty good? Hi, Buggy. Yeah, Clear Lake would absolutely be a killer place for a tournament, by the way. I've seen those tactical bass and guys catch those babies without arms out of that lake. All right, so this is how I'm going to do it tomorrow night. Um, it might take me a second to get um, kind of all set up. I'll have Baby T help me with some of this. But I'm going to – this is how we're going to do it. Um, if I'm at home doing live stuff, I'm going to have to do it through the phone because it seems to be more bulletproof than all of that fancy crap in my office. So at any rate, I, pre I appreciate every one of you guys for hopping on here and listening to me. Um, They still have these fish finders for sale and they still have stock of them. Not that I, I don't get paid by, for any of this, by the way. It's just, I know, I know 600 bucks is a lot of money, but if you, if you're in the position to swim, don't, don't let this pass up and think, oh, I'll get one next time. There might not be a next time. Um, but between the trolling motor and the fish finders, those are the two best upgrades you can do to your boat. 
aside from a two bank charger. If you do not buy a two bank charger when you're buying your boat, you're making a huge mistake. So that's a little advice. Take it for what it's worth. But like I said, I appreciate all you guys and I can't wait to see you tomorrow night. We're going to be bigger and better. And I'm going to pick up some more of these guys. Oh, January, which is rolling around real quick. Yingling for sale throughout America. For those of you that didn't know or watch my last couple live feeds, I'm jazzed about the idea of Yingling being everywhere. And I know someone's going to say they got it in Harrison, Arkansas. I know, but I don't do anything towards Harrison, Arkansas. But yeah, if I wanted Yingling right now, I could drive 22 minutes down the 65 and get some. But when it comes here, I'll enjoy it. And maybe someday Yingling will be like, hey, I want to wrap your boat with our stuff. I'd be, that would be awesome. But anyway, you guys, thanks again. I'll see you tomorrow night, seven o'clock Midwest time, five o'clock on the West Coast, eight o'clock on the East Coast. Be safe. I want to see you guys all here tomorrow night. Take it easy. Thanks again for watching.